I spent over $3,000 on the entire Xbox experience. All of the items I purchased from today's video were purchased directly from, or at least advertised directly on, xbox.com, right? So this is all of their very, very extensive list of accessories. And I'm gonna start out with something that's a little bit dumb, which is this. The Xbox rechargeable battery and USB-C cable. Now, you may look at this and say, hey Austin, it's 2024, my PS3 had a rechargeable battery in 2006, and to that I would say, yeah, it did, didn't it? But instead, I had the great, great happy fortune to spend $24.99 plus tax to get a rechargeable battery for my controller. So, to make this work, it is very simple. You take these, ah, oh, disgusting, AA batteries, we're hosts. Who wants to use those? Instead, I'm gonna use my neat little Xbox uh, battery thingy right here. And because this didn't come in the box, sorry, I didn't need to hit you in the face with that. <laughs> uh, since that didn't come in the box, I also have a handy nine foot, kind of nine foot USB-C cable. As you can see, I am roughly uh, one and a half of these cables tall. It's not enough to just play your controller the way that Phil Spencer intended. There's a more budget-friendly way to get more out of your controller. Uh, these are performance thumbsticks to upgrade your precision, aim, and movement. There you go, there's some bonus content for your weapon charm. Free for the first person who redeems it. So, if you too would like to improve your thumbstick capabilities, well, for the low, low price of $20, um, cap the price will personally help you be better at Call of Duty. Can I direct your attention to a very concerning statistic? This copy of Forza Motorsport comes in at a hefty 150.6 gigabytes. Do you know what that is? It's a lot of space. This only has a mere one terabyte of capacity. And so therefore, by installing Forza and, oh, I don't know, Modern Warfare 3, your SSD is almost full. Give or take a little bit, but it's uh, not a lot of space. Which is why the kind folks at Xbox have a wide accoutrement of different peripherals, accessories, and specifically storage enhancement devices. That's what they call them. Uh, don't look it up. Uh, including this. The Xbox approved, designed for WD Black C50 expansion card. How much did I pay for this one terabyte? Because I know they've come down in price, but this is still pretty expensive, right? Uh, yeah, that one was $150. I think it's 150 bucks on sale. Whereas you could easily get a probably two terabyte SSD for the PS5 at that same kind of price. Uh, the good thing is, this is very simple to install. Boy, that was a really bad noise. All you do is just line it up with the expansion module. And you press it in. And that should be literally be it. So, you can see here that I had 800 gigs initially and then 600 gigs after Forza, but I have 920 gigabytes specifically for this console. And it really is that simple. But, I hear you asking, two terabytes? <laughs> what are we, Amish? So instead, let's expand this a little bit farther. I know it's, it's a joke, because I don't think most Amish people care about two terabytes. I think that's probably fine, honestly. May I introduce the WD Black B10, a 12, yep, Count them, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, eight, not nine, not 10, not 11, but 12 terabyte hard drive. Wow, boy, <laughs> that's, you, it's funny. It looks just like the small one. Uh oh, I should have done that, whatever. <laughs> uh, well, there are a lot of jokes that I can make at this point. And I would like to just let you know that I'm gonna be the adult in the room. And I'm not gonna make any of the sus things that have come to mind as I look at these two. Wow, so size doesn't matter. You know what? I'm glad that I didn't have to say it, so it doesn't count. Um, and uh, technically this is 12 times bigger. Mm. Now, hold on a second. It's 10.9 terabytes. The box said 12, and I got 10.9. Hmm, not sauce. Also, I have a code. Does anyone want a month of Game Pass Ultimate? There you go. Now it's gone. With 14 terabytes of storage, our newly upgraded controller, and our invisible Xbox, the next step is to work on our Aural Bliss, which is why we have purchased the official Xbox wireless headset. Now this is actually, all joking aside, 
a very solid headset. This thing only runs you a hundred bucks. Sometimes it's on sale. I briefly used this in the past and you're getting a very solid experience. So of course it is wireless. You can also use it via Bluetooth so you can pair it with your phone or whatever the case is. It has a decent mic. Like honestly, there's a lot going for this thing for a hundred dollars. That's the first time I've seen that. That's a... Uh... Uh -huh. So we've got ourselves the headset itself, which comes with its little bendy boom mic. Um, these things are relatively comfortable and they also have the like rotating cups too. If I remember right, one side controls the volume of the game and the other controls your actual like party chat volume. So I have actually a decent number of options here. So I can change my EQ, uh, auto mute. I can change the actual mic light itself. So when it comes to the headset, I actually think this is really solid for $100. You can certainly spend more money than this and get stuff that has like a few more features or certainly has like higher fidelity audio. But like, I would argue that this is totally fine for the vast majority of people. Now what does make a difference is the actual controller. Now, I will say that I've always been a big fan of the Xbox One controller and the Series X as well. Like these are solid, good controllers. They're not as good as the DualSense in my opinion. Uh, the level of like feedback that you get from a DualSense is next level. But when it comes to a racing game, this is perfectly serviceable and having the additional height on the stick gives me a little bit more feedback. But as we recently learned, I am much faster not on a controller. Oh no, I'm faster with a wheel and I'm way slower in a car, unfortunately. That was good, that was good. I like that, I like that. The tail does not want to stay tight, that's fine. Heartbreak, downshift to four. But while sadly, Microsoft don't sell a multiple thousand dollar racing simulator setup for Micro Center. What they do sell is... It's over here, one minute. I gotta... No, 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 don't show it, no, don't show it. I'm gonna... just, just stay over there for a second and pretend that I'm doing a really cool gag. Okay, ready? Okay, we're gonna just, uh... you can cut all that stuff out, okay. So, all right, okay, yeah, all right. Which is why we have this, the Thrustmaster T248. Now this is a, I would say mid-range wheel and pedal set. So why don't we try to hook it up on the desk here and I'll try Forza the way it was meant to be driven with a wheel and some more updates hopefully. So with our Thrustmaster T248 connected, I've got my force feedback wheel, my pedals down here. Let's give this a try. So for context, this cost $400. Now that is in the, I would say, mid range of sort of racing wheels. You can certainly get cheaper stuff, but we've got force feedback. We have, I would say, a pretty nice selection of pedals. And wow, that's a lot of feedback in this wheel. It just sort of vibrates in my hand. Also, if it, in case it looks weird, I've got a second monitor over here I'm playing on. This is for you. So one of the nice things about this wheel is that I actually do have a full little screen that gives me some information. Now, it's not massively useful because I'm gonna wanna actually like take my eyes off the road, but I can see my revs and I can also see which gear I'm in. So as I shift, I can see that live. So especially if you're not used to driving on a wheel, you do need to get a little bit used to it because it's almost like sort of artificially overboosted compared to what you're probably used to on a controller. With this, like if I get too quick on the throttle, the wheel's gonna try to fight its way out of my hand, which, is nice because that's the way a real car functions, but you have to be a little bit careful. Why are they passing me? Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone passing me? All right, I think we've got all we need to see from our racing setup. Let's take a closer look at some of the um, wider world of Xbox accessories that exist out there because believe me when I say, some of the other stuff gets a little bit wacky. You don't want toast? What? Now we have this little series on the channel called Mystery Tech, where I took a look recently at this, the Xbox Series oh. S toaster. My now for what, 40 bucks or whatever? If you actually can find one, surprise, surprise, they sold out very quickly. This thing is actually really neat. Do anyone like some toast? Cause I can do two pieces at once with this bad boy. But you never seen that before on a toaster. So the nice thing about this toaster, if I could be a toast review channel for a second, is that not only does it look incredibly stylish, just like a real Xbox Series S. But on top of that, it has a little digital screen on it. It says I have 146 seconds to wait. So the next time you don't want to get jump scared by your toaster, it'll tell you exactly how many seconds before it is the big pow. While we wait for our toast, let me tell you a little bit about the Xbox Series S. If you're not familiar, the Xbox lineup was immediately split in two when this generation began. On the high end, 
there's the $500 Xbox Series X. A very competent console goes directly head to head with the PlayStation 5. But for the all digital cheaper model, we've got the Series S, which retails for $300, routinely goes on sale for below that, and in my opinion, is a terrific console for more casual gamers. And I don't say that with shade. Like, lots of us would appreciate a cheaper console that can still play all the same games. I mean, admittedly, there's no disk drive, so you will need to rely on dialing stuff, usually through Game Pass. But you get a small, cheap console, which just simply doesn't exist anymore. Now I will say that there is one additional version of the Xbox Series S to consider, which is the one terabyte. Now this one is a little bit of a harder sell because this is instead of being 300 bucks or like 250 on sale, this is a full $350 console. Now it does come in robot black, which I think is a very nice colorway, and it does have significantly more base storage. So we're talking about one terabyte SSD on this compared to 512 on the original Series S. It is very small. Oh. Oh. I had a timer and I still got scared. I peed a little bit. Anyone want some toast? Whoa, that looks cool. It's pretty cool, right? Again, I already did this bit for Mystery Techs. If you're a long time subscriber to the channel, thank you very much. And if you're not, what are you doing? You're missing out on toast review. A little dry. Probably could have done a four and shut off five. One of my favorite Series S accessories is the X screen. So we took a look at this back when it was still during crowdfunding. It's actually now been a fully licensed Xbox accessory. And the way this works is it attaches to the back of the Series S, so you have still the pass-through for your SSD as well as your power. But that's it, you don't have to plug in HDMI, you don't have to plug in an additional bit of power or whatever. And the cool thing about this is that not only is that a nice 1080p display, but when you close it, it actually puts the Xbox to sleep. Now it's not a battery powered unit, so you still need to actually have this to plug into power. But it's actually a really nice way to play the Series S on the go, if you don't want a gaming laptop. So while I wait for a beautiful Fortnite download, let me show you some more accoutrement, some additional accessories, some beautiful, wonderful add-ons to make your Series S cost a whole lot of money. So starting out with, we have the Xbox Elite Series 2. So this, uh, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. <clears throat> it's my wife's controller. I stole it for the video, so shh. So this, my friends, is one of the Series 2 Design Lab controllers. Now there is a huge amount of customization that you can do here. So this is a little bit of a simpler colorway. So it is essentially just blue and black, but you can customize, I mean, you can go through the little designer thing. There's like pages and pages and pages of options. And what I like about it is it's actually not that expensive. I mean, yes, the Elite Series 2, they started like 120, 130 bucks for the core and you can add on all the bits and bops. But to actually do the full custom colorway, it's only like an extra like 10 to 20 bucks based on which Xbox controller we want to do it on. Another option for your controlling capabilities is the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Now, this is a controller that's been out for a little while now. I believe it retails for about $100. And the idea here is that it is a immensely customizable experience. So it looks like a DJ pad or something, but you have an absolutely huge variety of different ways that you can map this. Do, do we not have the, <clears throat> the accessories so you can plug them in to the adaptive controller? Do we have our adaptive controller without the thing that makes it work? Ha! I would love to show this, but I'm an idiot and I forgot that it didn't come with any of them at all in the box. There is one additional way to control your Xbox. Not with a regular controller, or a pro controller, or a wheel, or a flight stick, or a series of adaptive controllers that you forgot to get the rest of. Oh no! There is a dedicated Razer keyboard and mouse specifically designed for Xbox. This is the Razer turret. Um, how much did I pay for the Razer turret? Uh, $250. What? <laughs> so if you want to double the price of your Xbox Series S, the Razer turret, look, okay, it's expensive and it's, it's old. It's the same price as the Series S on a good day. I, I look, yeah. it's a small price to pay to pwn the noobs. The, the noobs need to be pwned. <laughs> if they don't get pwned, they'll never learn their lesson. So inside the box, we've got ourselves a keyboard and a mouse and a dongle, importantly. So it does use 2.4, which means that we're gonna have to use the only unused um, port on our Series S because we're using the ones in the back. So we're just gonna plug this in real quick here. So the way this works is you have the actual, yeah, I remember that. 
It is clicky as hell, which is fine, but it's, uh, it doesn't feel like a $250 keyboard. I'll say that. This felt decent when it first came out, but to take off this huge plastic thing, you can pull out, wow, wow, whoa, holy, I might have a Prop 65 warning on my face now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So what you do is when you're ready, you deploy, and then you take your mouse and you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you take your mouse and. I don't think it works the way you think it does. One moment, please. You just, it's lightly magnetized. See, look, it's lightly magnetized. Yeah. See, uh, I was going to show you what this beautiful setup looks like, but I now have 15 more gigabytes left on my Fortnite download that I've been waiting on for quite a while. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow to give you the beautiful demo of this setup in all of its glory. And um, I'm going to hope that they don't turn off my aim assist because I need all the help I can get. And so with many, many gigabytes of Fortnite downloads complete, let us try, first of all, with our mouse and keyboard. So just as a heads up, the screen looks like it flickers on camera. It actually looks totally fine to your eyes. It's just the way that the camera's picking it up. So I would say most Xbox games do not support this, but Fortnite is one of the games that does support not only my mouse, but my keyboard. And I also have still like my Xbox button and everything. So we are now in Fortnite with mouse and keyboard. And boy, oh boy, this feels like a PC. And to be clear, you can use this mouse and keyboard with any Xbox and you can also use it with PC. It works on Xbox One, Series X, the whole thing. Now, the only downsides I can really say with this is that the keyboard feels a little cheapy, uh, especially considering that you can get much better keyboards for like half the price these days. And also the mouse, while it is good, and it's certainly much better in my opinion for actually controlling a game than the controller, it's more precise. Because it is magnetized to this platform here, it's a little sticky. Like it doesn't fly, it doesn't glide super smoothly. It's probably not a coincidence that Razer made one version of this for the Xbox One several years ago and have never really updated it since. Oh, wait, I actually didn't realize Fortnite does this. So look, I'm moving around with my mouse, okay, and then I switch over to controller. Oh, so you can seamlessly move between the two. Well, what a great segue for me to use the Elite Series 2 controller. Wow, that is so much slower than using the mouse. It's almost like, now the keyboard's better or something. I have to inform you that there was one additional piece of hardware on xbox.com that I saw and I could not say no to. The Razer Edge. This is a bizarre little handheld console. It is really, really weird. Let me walk you through it. So bottom line, it runs Android. But the thing is, it's not just a gaming device because you can actually take it off you got the tablet, and it comes with the Razer Kishi V2 Pro controller. Now, the thing that's sort of unusual about this is that you can just take this and attach this to your smartphone. And I would kind of argue that for a lot of people, this is almost more useful than the actual tablet itself. But let me put them together and show you because it's neat. It's not for everyone, as most things in this video are, but it is actually a really neat little setup. So, the actual tablet itself is a 144 hertz display. It is running a Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 as well as eight gigabytes of RAM, which you can think of as like an upper mid-range chipset. But importantly, because this is designed for gaming, it has a fairly decent cooling solution. Let's start by jumping into Xbox Cloud Gaming. I would just tell you right now, there's significant latency here. I know that a little bit of latency is not terrible for a lot of people. And like, I'm not sitting here saying like, this is impossible to play, but it's a bad enough experience that I wouldn't want to play it. So here, I'm gonna hit the break button. Watch me, watch me hit the button. Ready, set. How long was that? That was like a half a second of latency. Like it is uh, bordering on unplayable. So this setup, which is the Razer Edge, the tablet, the whole Android do, as well as the controller will run you $400 for the Wi-Fi model. Now that's a lot of money. And if you want 5G, it goes up to $600. Although here in the US, if you get through Verizon, they do have some incentives. But even just taking this as a $400 console, I like the fact that it's so small, but the problem is that that's the same price as a damn Steam Deck. And while the Steam Deck is way bigger, it is massively more powerful and it has a lot more flexibility in what you can do with it. A lot of my complaints with this are the same as Xbox Cloud Gaming. It's not for me. 
It's decent, but when I look at what NVIDIA have been able to do with GeForce Now, that is actually an acceptable experience for me. Xbox Cloud Gaming, in all but the absolute best case scenarios, is just not there. Even when it's streaming video perfectly, it still has enough latency that drives me crazy. It's a tough sell because you got a phone that's probably gonna do the exact same thing. So when you look at this entire setup, what you'll see is that it is an eclectic mix of hardware. And I think it does a good job of showing the difference between the PlayStation and the Xbox sides of the fence. PlayStation is a little bit more of a walled garden. There's certainly some third party stuff, but they try to sell you as much first party stuff as possible. Microsoft, I think we'll put pretty much anything that is vaguely green on xbox.com as I have learned today. But thank you very much for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel and ring the ding ling button. And stay tuned, I'm about to build my ultimate Nintendo setup, which is going to be a Switch OLED and my hopes and dreams.